everybody. This is Josh Scorcher, and uh, we are uh, entering the next leg of Chapter 4, and uh, we have a guest who I... Uh, it's been it's been a little bit it's been a little bit of work, but we finally were able to find a day where all of us are able to play. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Howdy, my name is Nonat. I am on YouTube as Nonat Ones, youtubecom slash ones I make a bunch of Pathfinder 2e videos, mostly going over the rules, how they work, and why I do or don't like them. And I'm really pumped to be here playing Boulder. I knew you were going to do the intro. <laughs> well, it's, uh, hey, we're, it's like we're all the, we're all like that. It's uh, it's just part of the job, honestly. <laughs> it's like every it's like every every moment like this is a moment to advertise and and, and a moment to brand. Videos so brought to you by the sweet taste of Coke Zero, same great taste, zero sugar. <laughs> also, I. Uh... Kind of have an announcement. Yes. Yay! Yeah. Oh, yes. So, um, I am elated. This is a very special session for me today because it is the first one in six and a half months that I've gotten to play inside an actual freaking house! I can't hold the button and clap at the same time! I'm but facing the same problem. But I am yes. officially no longer homeless. Yay! Yeah! That's great, dude. For context, I have for context, my housemate and I have been homeless and living in a tent or occasionally house sitting slash couch surfing for half of this year since April. I'm so happy. That's awesome. That I am amazing. genuinely Please. elated right now. Relieved. Yeah. And I, I don't felt... get to miss out on today's session. <laughs> okay, <This is> so <laughs> genuinely the happiest I've heard you all year. Yes, ge yeah. genu genuinely happy for you, but uh, we're stalling. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. let's get going. Okay. But for let's a good reason. Through. Congratulations, Shay. All right. <clears throat> all right. In the last session, the party minus Hoshimi had returned from the ruins of Bazaar with Yakumo in tow. First, Korra and Shailen confronted him, interrogating him as much as possible about anything related to their leads. He revealed the drow supremacist philosophy had endured in some way, not in the same form, but in some way. After Korra left, Shailen severely wounded Yakumo to reduce his chances of ever finding Korra and Arlen again. Everyone has begun pooling their resources about everything they know so far and the direction that it seems to be taking them is the apothecary. Everyone is, wa everyone is walking down the streets. First it was one member, then it was more, then not wanting to, then Everyone not wanting to be left behind, everyone has headed over to the apothecary in Urzaban. So, let's see if I can get this and... Ooh! Yay, it worked! <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's test out the, um, let's test out the bugs for this. Alright, seems to be working fine. Groovy. Uh, Adrian, right. Adrian will knock on the door. Right. Love the atmosphere, sound effects, ambience. Love it. I like the best dreams. I believe it's pronounced ambiance. Can we kill him? No. I'm not. I don't exist yet. I wasn't talking about your character. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, you right. gonna go in? Uh, yep. All right. Hi. All right. Hi. So you you enter and you see the uh the snake folk from before uh just ca just casually uh, mixing some ingredients in a mortar and pestle. It's a uh, I 
remember you. Mm -hmm. uh, Bet she seven wishes she could forget. <sighs> As you three enter, uh, she looks up and says, "Oh, hello." Uh, she, she's uh, she's looking back at uh, Seven, and she's kind of shrinking back a little. Second. You're not here to burn, burn down my apothecary, are you? I, I was drunk. It was an accident. Uh, Seven immediately just bolts out the door. Uh, a Adrian. <laughs> Seven. Uh, uh, Shalin just. Uh, he, Shalin sees it. Seven. Wait. No, she she ran and hid behind Sybil. Uh. First of all, okay, she... lol, the, the fact that Sybil is less scary, that's just, I can't. <laughs> okay, um, Hoshimi looks over at Batya. First of all, you're thinking of a chimera. Griffins don't breathe fire. Oh. So... I wasn't, I wasn't racist, was it? No, it's an understandable mistake. Second of all, we're not here to cause any sort of damage. Oh, well, um, would you... Then can I interest you in some wares? Um, sure. Um, uh, Adrian steps up to... Adrian steps up to the counter. Allow me to click. There we go. Um, a couple things. One of you can, um, two, um, health potions. Um, either of lesser or moderate healing. And I was wondering if you could identify something. Oh, uh, sure, I suppose I can do that. Uh, a, a lesser healing potion will be around 12 gold pieces. Lesser is 12. Ah, got it. Okay. Uh, Adrian looks to his bag and. Let me click in here for a second. Just checking the other thing. Oh, there. Okay. Uh, he hands over. Uh, 12 gold pieces. Alright. And I'm, I'm gonna just subtract that here. Okay. There we go. Alright, and uh, what next? Uh, Adrian looks at the, uh, the liquid. Actually, uh, he looks to Oshimi. Is this the same color as the, um, liquid you found in, Mount, at Mount Polis? I'm going to have to look at my Crap, because I don't remember nothing. Uh, there was a there was a red liquid we found in the chest. Um, we, we also we... never identified that pin, so not yet. No. Um, what color is the liquid you have? It, it it's um the current the well the health potion I have is red, and I believe the the other thing was also a red liquid. I, are they the same, or is it? <sighs> Hoshi Hoshimi puts the other, the um, red potion, the red liquid onto the counter. What is this? Uh, she she ta she takes a look. She takes a look at it. This is a lesser healing potion. Oh. Uh, and she 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 looks at that. She looks at another one. Yes, these are the exact same jars that I use. Oh. Wow. Oh. Whoever had this oh. one purchased it from me. Ah, uh, mm. a couple of bandits. Uh, they ba managed to make their way over to Mount Bolas. Oh. All right. Um, Is there anything else I can help you with? We do need to ask you something. All right, uh, what is that? I remember. It, I remember it had to do with the memory potion, and I can't remember what the question um, is. Yeah, that was the thing I was going to ask a DM question. It's like I should. I should show her. Can I show her the potion? Uh. Uh. Yes. Good. I Flint. Flint uh, walks up to Flint. Walks up to the counter, and it's he, the counter is actually taller than he is, and he gets kind of in it for a moment. Uh, he. Uh, Adrian so. mouths to Baltia. Don't comment on it. Also, don't whisper so loud so that someone can hear you. He mouthed it. Oh, he mouthed <laughs> it. Okay. okay. I thought he actually whispered. So, Flynn actually climbs up on top of the counter and stands on top of it and says, Do you think you can identify something for me, please? Uh, sure. Uh, sure. 
Uh, is there another potion that you need identified, or? Yeah, he takes out the he takes out the memory potion and uh, shows it to her. Hmm. Yes, I've made these before. Yet, I'm the I'm the one who created them. Hmm. What I want to know is why that dr what? Uh, no, I should probably shouldn't say it. I don't remember what happened last time. Wait. Uh, about last time, you said something about. He looks in the back and he sees Seven's in the room. That Seven had your potion. How, how could you tell? It is a very distinct smell. It's I've worked on this potion many times. It's uh, been very useful for law enforcement. Um, if I uh, know and working on it, it has a very distinct uh, smell. It's I can I can almost do it instant. I can tell what it is extinct. But especially because on her it smells so pungent and undiluted. It's question. The question, Miss uh, Bartia, was it? Yes. Would the undiluted version of your potion function differently from the diluted version? If so, uh, what would be the differences? Well, yes, uh, I think I've ex already explained this before, but um, I'm guessing not everyone was here, so I'll explain it again. Afraid not. Okay, the potion, my potion of uh, shared memories. At first it was uh, just a way to use, uh, just a way to store memories or to help people remember something. But uh, recently, uh, law enforcement, well, when I first created it, found a great use for it in order to... Uh, gain evidence. Surprisingly, it's actually admissible in court. I, I'm just as shocked as you are to hear that. <laughs> but uh, hey, I'm getting I'm getting a steady government stipend, which is great. But uh, all it really is supposed to do is um, all, it, all it's really supposed to do is give the imbiber the memories and sensory information stored in there uh, up to about a minute. It takes a little bit. It takes a little bit to focus, and that's the undiluted version. That's the safe version. The unsafe version. In a, in experimental trials from uh, volunteers, or sometimes with myself. If you imbibe an undiluted potion of shared memories, they could be so powerful that they could overwrite previous memories that you may have. That is you why I. Do, that is why I have not shared the recipe with every with anyone. I have not even written it down. Because if I do write it down, and someone steals it, imagine what imagine what chaos could happen. Hmm. What, if someone is... what if someone Sorry. extremely trustworthy who always had the paper with them, no matter where they go, no matter where they've been, would you trust them to have the recipe? He actually takes out his notebook, which is filled with all kinds of papers that he's had for years. Um, I, I actually have a concern about that. Um, you say that the undiluted memory potion, um, can replace memories, right? Yes. Are you sure you've never sampled it yourself and I perhaps... Have I have sampled it myself and... No, no. Against your will to the point where... You were forced to give up that information, and you just don't remember she it. She has a point. If someone did steal a memory potion like that, they'd have the power to alter your memories. They could take it right from under your nose, and you wouldn't even know about it. And I'm not saying that you are not trustworthy or anything like that. I, I just... Obviously, there are risks. It's a uh, she. She raises her finger, but then she just kind of bends it. 
I, I suppose you have a point there. If I know for a fact <sighs> that I have only, I have never written it down. And the re my and I have my reasons for that is because it is very dangerous. But hmm. the, the, that is the problem with this potion, I suppose. A thought occurs. What? You mentioned that you had found about the negative side effects from experiments on yourself as well as others. May I presume that you have experienced the negative side effects of the imbibed potion before? Of the undiluted potion before? Indeed. Uh... Then perhaps you have an antidote? I do not have an antidote. Then how are you able to get your real memories back if you had experienced false experienced the false memories before? You don't. Would it be possible to make an antidote? If someone had the recipe, could they reverse engineer it and make an antidote? Making an antidote has never really been something I think I thought I needed to do because I never sold it undiluted and I never wrote the recipe down. Why are you why are you so insistent about this? Because there's Flint. Because, okay? It, it, we have our reasons. And I'm sure As for my Sorry. I'm sure those reasons are important if it affects us. If it, if you're uncomfortable, Flint, we can talk about this in private. Okay. He actually and... kind of he steps down from the counter and actually kind of steps away. And as for my own reasons, if someone had stolen the memory potion from you and used it against you, I was hoping that if your memories could be restored, then we'd know one way for another for certain. I suppose I could try and figure out an antidote. It might take a while because it never really occurred to me that that might it would be necessary. I guess I suppose the thought never occurred to me that my own memories might be. I mean, I do know that. Okay, so I have tested it before on myself, and there are memories from when I was a child that uh, were were erased and were replaced by someone else's. See. So. I never made a I never made an antidote because I wanted to keep that those false memories as a reminder of what this could do. If you've made something that you actively know is dangerous, I would think that it's responsible to make a way to actively to actively reverse the dangerous effect. Well, this is I can't believe I'm time. saying this, but Hoshimi is right. Well, this has never been a problem before. To your knowledge, at least. Unfortunately, it's become a problem for maybe all of us. We're trying to track down um, a girl who's taken from Cord. Um, she might be, in, uh, she, and she's might be involved with someone who's very dangerous. Hmm. I see. To be clear, no one is upset at you because there really is limited reason to think of something like that. But it is something that you should you should consider and probably do going forward. 
Hmm. Fine. I suppose I can work on an antidote. Uh, where are you all headed? Right now, our waypoint is towards directing and across the um, across the mountain range. But um, we're, we we just got to figure out a, a way to get over, a uh, way to get past there. All right. And uh, where is where would you say is your final destination, or a place where I could perhaps send a telegram to uh, Direc that that could reach you? Direct in. Direct in. All right. Uh, uh, which di uh, which district? Uh, there are there are uh, th there are uh, three of them. The castle, Adrian. The castle oh. district. All right. All right. She she begins she begins writing she begins writing things down. I will brew some things. I will do some experiments and I will uh, get back to you. Okay. And stay safe. Well, with the increased card presence right now, it's uh, it's hard, it's hard not to. It's uh, most people would be frightened by them, but the fact that uh, everyone's being so vigilant and just walking out outside, it's uh, it's nice knowing that uh, no one, it's uh, it's a lot more unlikely that someone's gonna break in. Keep your own guard up, nonetheless. Sorry, what? Keep your own guard up, nonetheless. Even with the guard presence. If you're, if you're, if you're suggesting. All right. Hashimi oh. pets along Seven's neck. Come on, sweetie, let's go. <laughs> Okay, okay. All right. Stay safe out there. All right. So, we're all set? Yep. Oh, um... Did we get everything that we needed? More or less. I believe we're all Recipe? set. Recipe? Antidote? Anything? Uh, well, we did find out that, uh, that red liquid that we found at, uh... In the uh, in the loot box. Mountains. Yep, that uh, another health potion. So we got a, so we got a second one. Well, yeah, I was there for that, but I'm asking, did you figure out the recipe? She's working on an antidote. Oh okay. dear. At least one will be worked on. Just. And good and good news is she'll have a direct line to the castle district of Directian. Um, Olwen looks kind of nervous. My thing, my worry is that she might be on a certain <clears throat> someone, small someone's radar. And that's the reason I brought up the fact that her memories might have been altered. I think he, has a, he has a hankering for powerful anythings. Um, Let's head back to the tavern. Just to get our things together so we can get ready to go. Of course. And, Owen, you did say that our small friend does like to uh, discard things when he no longer has a need for them. So it's possible that she is off his radar. She served her purpose and now he's forgotten about her. True, but... There's always the possibility that if she starts working on something else that would be of interest to him, she could come back <sighs> onto it. As in, uh, Hoshimi gives Alwyn a very pointed look. Let's go back to the tavern. Yeah, there are things we shouldn't discuss on the streets like this, so a lot of things. They're not wrong. <clears throat> Alright. All right. So... All right, so as you're walking down the streets, you see uh, you see Yasmin. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you see Yasmin walking down the road, and she appears to have a lot of uh, camels with her. Yasmin. Oh, hello. Uh, so, um, 
I heard about uh, what e everything that you needed to do and everything that uh, needed to happen. So I figured that I'd get uh, a lot of these supplies uh, prepared for you. <laughs> On top of things, as always. Indeed. Hmm. All right, and uh, this is uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna show this to Nonat. That's this is what she looks like. Yo, she a cutie though. <laughs> <laughs> You can see her see me. Uh, careful, she's got a knife. <laughs> a knife! What? No! What? No, 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 I don't. There we go, there's a <laughs> oh, I, No, no, I don't. <laughs> okay, who just did that? That was an amazing impersonation. <laughs> that was that me. Was, that was Finn. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, um. Hoshi. Okay, Hoshimi's going to lean over and whisper to, um... Okay, no, she's not gonna whisper. She's going to say, I'm going to write this, because language barriers are awesome. Alright. Alright, yes, and she's also going to... She's going to say... Uh, she, she also sent you a message in the, uh, language barrier. Mm-hmm. Alright. And uh she also lo she also looks to you all and where is it? Alright, she also uh hands she hands all of you a letter. Oh uh, I assume oh. in common or is it in Calcat? Uh it is uh it is in common. Alright. There is this uh, letter and container from uh, Cora and Arlen. They had already left. It appears they had a boat to catch. Aww. Oh dear. I. Oh. I wanted to say goodbye, but I understand. Um, well, Are they what okay? Does it... uh, uh, read the letter yourself. Alright, we open up the letter. Uh, indeed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do my best Katie impression. <laughs> Sorry to oh, dash off right without here. a real goodbye, but we're heading on the next ship east and don't want to miss it. The farther we are away from the city and him, the better for everyone. As a way of saying thank you for helping me in the desert and for helping to find Arland, we've left some of, um, Giacomo's stash here. Okay, sorry, the way his name is spelled makes me want to say something else that starts with Jack. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's only two letters off, okay? Like, yeah, um... I mean, you're not wrong, but carry on. Minus a few of the sparklies. Sparklies. We hope that we get to see you again someday, but preferably when one is not stranded in the desert and the other is not kidnapped by a maniac. Cora and Arlen and Steve. Yes, Steve is coming with us too. Hey, Steve! Okay, Ari, I'm genuinely impressed. Katie's not even dead yet, and she's already spinning in her grave. <laughs> I'm already trapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alright, All right. so I believe uh, beforehand, in order to save time, we had divi divided this loot out uh, prior. Uh, I've already, so. split, already split uh, the gold from it. So in the chest, you find about 100 gold pieces. Uh, Hand wrap some mighty blows, uh, some very fine silk rope, uh, thieves tools, a pearl white spindle, a mummified hand, a stone with a rune on it, uh, two scrolls, a dark purple potion, and brown and a brown oil. Did you already put um, who like th th those oh, items in what? our inventory? Yes. yes. Okay, you're a wonderful person, and I'm happy I married you. <laughs> there any, uh, uh, Dear, what half of these things do? Shylan says. Uh, Adrian's looking at the two scrolls. Oh, well, I'm about to find out. Uh, what do I roll for the scrolls? What's the minimum safe distance we okay. should be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, one of them is uh, one of them can be identified with uh, nature, and one of them can be identified with arcana. All right, I'll, all right, I'll identify the Arcana one, and I'll give the Nature one to uh, uh, Flint to look at. All right. I'm on it. My rolls. All right, so roll, uh, roll, okay, so Adrian, roll Arcana, and uh, Flint, roll Nature. Oh, that was almost a nat 20. 
Hey! I was so hoping for a 12. <laughs> no, no, not this time. All right, what do we get? All right. Uh, Adrian, you have identified the first scroll as... Comprehend language. Aha, yes! Uh, Flint, you have identified the other scroll as Spirit Sense. Ooh! Spirit Sense. What does... Do either of you know what that does? Not a clue, but it sounds awesome. Um, <laughs> is there something that somebody can roll to know what it does? Like, is it nature? Okay, or well, it yeah, well, it's part, well, it's part of identifying the spell. Okay, so... Uh, what Spirit Sense does is it allows you to uh, open your mind to the metaphysical, enabling you to sense nearby spirits. Even if you aren't searching, you get a check to find haunts and spirits in the area. Oh. Cool. Actually, so, yeah, I, I, in, a in a 30 foot emanation, it's basically detect magic, but for spirits. Awesome. It's gonna be a Ghostbuster. Okay, um, can I use my learn a spell action on the scroll so that way I can add that to my uh, spell list? Uh, I think you can do that. Yeah. You must spend what? Yes. It, it is going to spend about uh two. Uh, it is going to take about two hours, though. All right, no problem. Can he uh, do it on the road? Yeah. It, it well, thankfully it's passive, so um. Yeah. All right. Can I do that too, or do I only get to use it if I have the scroll with me? Yeah. You, you, you only uh you only get to use it if you can uh, cast spells. Got it. Which, uh, um, I, I, I have a magic. I only have like one spell. I don't think that counts. Yeah, that that's an innate spell. But sorry. Dang it. No, it's okay. It's okay. But hey, you hey you identified it. So yeah. good job. I'm useful. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So there's the feat. Learn a spell. No. Or the act. Passive action. Excuse me. Learn a spell. All right. So yes, you'd be you would be able to learn comprehend languages, but uh, spirit sense is a little bit beyond you. Roger. Okay, it's a little it's a little bit uh, a little. So, uh, all right. I believe uh, after if all that, uh, you guys are now gonna head out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, anyone else want to identify anything else? I want to oh. try again with that designer pin, but we can do that on the road, right? Yeah, you can. Okay. Let's get on the road. On the road again. I mean, Let's I wouldn't the mind for this pin at a hundred gold. I wouldn't uh, mind trying to find out what the frick the spindle does, but uh, we'll do you that can on the road again. Who's stop who's stopping you from doing that while we're traveling? Yeah, you can do it. Oh, that's what I just said. We'll do it. Oh, on the I did not hear you. It cut you out for me. Okay. <laughs> All right, continue. All right then. That's uh, yeah. Ya Yasmin looks. Uh, Yasmin looks to Hoshimi and says, "All right." Be safe out there. It's a. Uh... Do me one favor. Hmm? Apologize to Kadir for me. I was a little snappy with him earlier. He's going to be very surprised to hear that, but. I know. But. Also, tell yeah. him I'm bigger than him and that he shouldn't stare me in the eyes like that next time. It's bad. <laughs> I think that was the cat instinct talking, but. Well, it's just. The last couple of weeks have taught me to cherish the friends that I have, you know? Oh. She runs up to you and gives you a hug. And Hoshimi hugs her back. Mm. Alright. Take care of Kikria, uh, too. And again, hire more staff. I know that things have been busy over at Silver Star. Will do. Alright, then she, uh, she, hands you all the, she hands you all the camels and uh, she leaves. See, if Cora and Arlen had wanted to stick around, I thought maybe they would be good staff, too. No. They said they were... They said they had a boat to catch, so... Yeah. Oh, no. I, that was just um, a nice little thought I had. That way we'd know they were safe, you know? Yes. And it, it might have been nice. I mean, Cora's a pretty good musician. But it is what it is. Let's get going. Alright. Okay, so. Okay.
Okay. Anyway, Seven is trotting up ahead. She's happy to be out and about out of the city. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Hoshimi takes one last takes one look over her shoulder as they're leaving. Bye, Arzaban. I'll be back as soon as I can. No more scary snake lady. <laughs> you really didn't like her. Well, no, she tried to touch my head. Hmm. Well, if I may point out, so did Flint when we first met. Yeah, People but, learn. Yeah, but I know Flint, and Flint's like my brother, and I don't know her, and she came into my territory, and uh, I I didn't bite her. I I was good. Seven. If anybody if anybody wants to touch your head, they're gonna have to go through me. So you step out into the blazing sands. Well, you don't step out. The camels step out. You're on them into the blazing sands of the Ernian Desert, uh... heading west. <laughs> they do a what? lot of the work here. I think they deserve a lot of respect and appreciation. Why? I respect them. I just don't know how to ride them very well. Hoshimi pets the neck of her camel and says, "It's not that difficult, you know." They look like something I could eat, but I won't. I've barely Please, ever. I mean, I've barely ever ridden a horse. I walk everywhere. I could carry you. I'm on a camel. You don't need to carry me right now. <sighs> but I have four legs just like them! <sighs> By the uh, way... You, you know what, Flint. guys? You know what, guys? One of you leave my camel. I feel like stretching a bit. Hoshimi, okay. um, Hoshimi um, jumps off of her camel and just for giggles, she, like, turns into the fox. You can see her, like, knead at the sand a little bit and she start, then she starts trotting alongside Seven. Oh. By the way, Flint. Hmm? It sounded like you had. It sounded like there was something on your mind back at the apothecary. Something you can share. Flint looks over to Seven. Is she playing? Is she paying attention? Ah, uh, no. She's a little distracted by Hoshi. It's, it's, it, it's complicated. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I should say anything without uh, someone else's permission. Sevens? What, uh, uh, what? You want to ask Seven's permission before you say it. Uh, what gave you that idea? Because you looked right at her. I'm not blind. It could have been a mirage. Uh, ooh, I have four arms. Okay, now. even how Jamie looks back at Flint, and even with her fox face, she's just like, really? <sighs> Flint. Yes, I need to ask Seven's permission. Which also tells me, by context clues... You know something about the potion, about why Seven smells like the potion. Uh, okay, Seven does, uh, look up at all of this. Um, well, uh, um, she, she was on, uh, <clears throat> Flint didn't know if he was supposed to say anything, and he felt like I shouldn't say anything, so we, was that, was that bad? We're not upset. I'm just placing things together. Well, I'm not upset, and I don't really care if any of you are upset. Well, I don't know why we shouldn't hide this from them, uh, Flint. Uh, shouldn't we tell them you found something in my, in my, um, um, as she points to her rod? Yeah. You found the potion in there, didn't you? That's where the smell was coming from. I didn't Hoshimi wanna... immediately changes back. When was this? A while ago, back at the university. That was when it all started and when I started doing my studies and everything. Why did you keep it, it secret? I didn't want to get too much word around it. I thought maybe I could handle it myself because... I don't know, I... It's not that I don't trust you guys, it's just I got... 
nervous about this whole thing. I thought maybe if I could figure this whole thing out myself, it would the word wouldn't have to get around. We wouldn't have to spread too much of it everywhere. I don't, uh, I don't know. Uh, seven, seven kind of gets in between both of them. He didn't want me to get hurt. He was worried. He didn't know. He didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, he, he, his intentions were good. Hmm. Shylan no. also. Sorry. No, go ahead. Shylan also stands near Flint. His discretion was understandable, and in this case, probably wise. None of. I'm going to be honest. I don't think any of us had a reason to trust each other back then. To be honest, I'm still working on it now. He he did not distrust. It's just he wasn't sure what would happen if he pulled it out. And you you, you see Flynn visual, visually cringe at that say statement. I, I I just I tried to solve a problem on my own. Okay. And obviously it didn't up. work. Hoshimi looks up at Flint. I'm not mad. Just understand that I worry about Seven. And I don't like finding out things this way, you know? Flint's not bad, is he? For keep No. No, he's not. I'm just frustrated. Still... It does paint a picture, and a both interesting and disturbing picture. It's... I don't know if this is true, but a, a thought has come into my head. A theory, at least. What else? Adrian! No, share. He is... Charlotte calls out to Adrian. Uh, you, you hear him, uh... Adrian, you hear him talking, Owen. You hear him talking in Elvish for a second, and then he, he, cuts, start, he cuts back to, uh... Um... Uh, uh, to common. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, okay, uh... By the way, is Owen close to them? He's just gonna try to get her attention, too. Yeah, she... Yeah. I, I, moved o I moved over. Oh, yes! Oh, hello! Um, hi! Can you need me? Yes, actually, I need actually. I've got a theory, and uh, need the smart people to try to see if they see what they uh, think on this theory. That includes you, by the way, Flint. So, for those who were out of the loop, a reason why Seven smelled like the lady's potion is because. The tube in the back of her head has the potion inside it. At least that's what Flint just told us. That he explains so he... much! Actually, because, like, remember how she wrote all those scientific equations? And then she just couldn't know how to write it anymore? Mm. Yeah. And there's that snake lady said that the memories get replaced. So, like, she knew how to write, and then she doesn't know how to write? That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Actually, you're kind of touching into what I was something I was thinking. Oh. <laughs> See, obviously, she doesn't have another person's memories entirely. She's clearly got her own memories, but I'm thinking that it's not <clears throat> possible to just teach a griffin to think like a human, even bolstering its intelligence would still leave it missing so much knowledge and context that it wouldn't produce the right results. I think that the only way they could give Seven human-level sapience and awareness was to give her the memories of another human, that human's knowledge. Almost like flash cloning Sapien. Oh. That was one of the things I was thinking of too. Basically, she's just a glorified storage capsule for someone else's memories. 
That's awful. And Probably then just for seven not having not like if that's true, then they took away seven's actual identity. And if that's and then they possibly took away that other person's identity, if not life. Uh, seven goes extremely wide and clearly starts to tear up. You didn't do anything wrong, Seven. I'm I not Seven? To... Yeah. No, you are we Seven. You, you are Seven. seven. Oh, dear. Whoever that Maybe. person is who did that to you, that doesn't matter. You're Seven, and we love Seven. Yes, <laughs> that... That is true. The length of a light year for an approximate result multiply the length value by 5.8 plus 12. Okay, Hoshimi, while Seven is is muttering. She, like, she, like, nuzzles against her, and she uses one of her paws to, kind of, since she's so small, she, like, pets along one of, no, one of Seven's legs, and she's looking up at her, still, um, in a, still in an affectionate manner. That's the thing. The griff, the griffin. <clears throat> Seven is not just the griffin. Seven is not just the memories. Seven is you. The combination of both. Remove Ron, one, remove the other. You might be who or what you used to be, but you wouldn't be seven. Okay, Hoshimi's now a teddy fox. <laughs> all right. All right. So, um, all right. So can I move on to the next part? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So. Assuming they get the griffin up. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to say that Hoshimi did eventually wriggle free and kind of pulled seven along. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, a tiny so. little fox pulling a some hundred pound uh, griffin. Yeah, yet. no, not physically. Seven would have willingly followed. Oh yeah, easily. Okay. All right, so. Okay. <laughs> I right. am not unaware of physics, woman. So yes, these are very these are very fat. These are uh, fairly quick camels, and you're able to travel about. Uh, Nine, about 90 miles. It's like you did st you did uh, stop a few times uh, for you did stop a few times for chow and rest, but yes, uh, Ernie and camels are very very attuned to good and expedient travel in the desert.